My name is David Daniel Ball, and these are the headlines for Saturday, the 9th of October, 2010. The morning comic is to do with Herbert Charles Chermside, a former governor of Queensland. The Bible quote for today, I, even I am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed, I, and not some foreign God among you, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. From Isaiah chapter 43, verses 11 and 12. And in uh, headlines from Fox, Democrats are raising the issue of veterans' health care in political races across the country, including Chris Coon's Senate race in Delaware against Republican Christine O'Donnell, with GOP painted as disloyal to veterans for suggesting private sector options. Bulls propel stocks higher as September's gloomy jobs report could force the Fed to make it easy money policies even easier. President names Tom Donilon to replace General James Jones as National Security Advisor as Jones heads for the door. Apparently, the ruler of Libya also rules over the internet if your domain ends in .ly, as one California woman found out the hard way after daring to show bare arms on her website. And Jerry Brown's campaign apologized Thursday for a private conversation captured on audio tape that has the California Democrat gubernatorial candidate agreeing to an AIDS description of Republican rival Meg Whitman as a whore. The exchange, inadvertently recorded by voicemail, discussed Whitman cutting a deal to protect law enforcement pensions as the candidates competed for endorsements from police. And in breaking news from News.com, computer security firm Sophos has shot down rumors that a 101010 10 virus will strike computers at 10 a.m. tomorrow, October the 10th, 2010. The New South Wales government's new transport timetable does not meet the needs of long-suffering commuters, the state opposition says. A 78-year-old man has been charged with allegedly trying to entice three young girls into his car in Sydney's west. Two students were shot at Southern California Elementary School today, Fox News Channel reported. A former Queensland politician, Robert Lindsay Poole, has been arrested in northern Thailand and faces charges of cheating and fraud in relation to an energy company set up in Thailand. From New South Wales and the ACT. For the innocent victim of pedophile David Shane Whitby, the nightmare will never fade. He'll be jailed for at least 26 years. While surging power price forced many to rely on blankets, life's fine for the state minister. And a career pedophile who committed the most perverting and disgusting crimes in the nation's history has been jailed for 32 years. A survey of global cities put Sydney at the top when it came to the percentage of income spent on mortgages. From Queensland, almost one complaint is made every weekday about a child being left behind by a bus in Brisbane. A rogue ex-cop who bashed three handcuffed tourists told fellow police he was so jaded with the public he wanted to burn them all with napalm. The government won't use emergency capacity of Wyvenhoe Dam for a long-term storage until more is known about the effect on flood risk. From Victoria, should the Green Party hold the balance of power in the state, a wave of anti-farming and anti-rural moves could ensue. Victorian irrigators will bear the brunt of a new plan to revive the Murray-Darling Basin. Melbourne's mild downturn in auction clearance rates is masking a dramatic slump in some suburbs. Nothing new from the Northern Territory. From South Australia, the man in charge of the review of the Parks Community Centre, Monsignor David Capo, knew about the sale well before it was revealed in the state budget. Scientists have developed a way to pick the healthiest IVF embryo and potentially identify the baby's gender. A wave of violent crime, including two murders, police and gang shootings, home invasions and wild brawls, has swept Adelaide. The state must boost funding of all the ailing legal system, or court delays will be further blown out by a growing backlog of cases the state's top legal sources claim. Lyle McEwen Hospital doctors and South Australia Ambulance Service officers yesterday took industrial action and are warning of further joint stoppages. From Western Australia, after weeks of pay negotiations, the hospital support workers have been offered an extra $27 a week by the Health Department. The Commissioner of the Corruption and Crime Commission, Len Robert Smith QC, announced today that he will be retiring on January the 31st next year. 
Fears are held for the safety of a Western Australian Muslim man who was reportedly being held by the Egyptian government. And in Tasmania, Tasmanian police have rejected a government report that says the force failed to act on the relationship between a 12-year-old prostitute and her pimp. And in the journalist corner, Capitol Hill clash, the GOP is on the offensive to retake control, so what's the Dems' strategy to defend their turf? Representative Eric Cantor and Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz face off. Don't miss this exclusive. Did Dobbs hire illegals? Lou responds, plus Geraldo examines where the promised money to Haiti has gone. The White House wants more stimulus, but is all the spending really working to create jobs? And Nancy Pelosi says food stamps and unemployment benefits give the economy the best bang for the buck. Really? Plus a new tax plan that will really drive up your costs. And in comments from Bill O'Reilly, Fox News is 14 years old. From Anne-Marie McAvoy, big blow to government terror, the trial demonstrates why military tribunals are so integral to fighting terrorists. By Stephen Crowder, why leftists want to put you all on mass transit. Sons of Guns by Tim Blair, the second generation of racers of Bathurst. From Andrew Bolt, give the Nobel Committee a prize. Have the Nobel Committees finally curbed their mad left tendencies? First, the Literature Prize goes to a sane, readable writer and former conservative presidential candidate Marie Vargas Llosa. Now the Peace Prize goes to someone who's not actually a green warrior like Al Gore, anti-capitalist or critic of the West, but a brave campaigner against the biggest danger to human rights in the world. But what about our own cultural duties? Also from Andrew Bolt. The cultural duty of Australians should be protecting uh, its citizens from the uncivilized cultural duties of other cultures. A Samoan national avoided jail for smashing the jaw of a man because of a cultural duty to protect his sister. The Brisbane District Court was told Lawrence Milo, then age 20, king hit the man as he walked from Brisbane's Victory Hotel to a taxi rank about 1 a.m. on de December the 19th. How leftists reform betrayed poor students. Obama's Afghanistan strategy is imploding. Greens take over Labour's Climate Change Committee. And election results come in by boat. More for you there at the link.